One day, the kind-hearted Mother Holly went down to water the flowers in the garden. At that time, she saw three corpulent hunters looking towards her house. Mother Holly went to them curiously. Hey, strangers! What are you doing in my garden? This garden and house are inside our hunting grounds. That's why you need to vacate your house immediately. We'll demolish your house and build a hunting lodge here. Oh, but how is that possible? I've been living in this house for years. Don't make it difficult, old lady. If you don't leave the house right away, we'll knock the house down while you're asleep at night. <laughs> The hunters walked towards the house laughing. Mother Holly tried to stop them, but failed. The hunters started to destroy the doors and windows with their axes. Mother Holly hurried to the flower garden deep in the forest, and she loudly called for help. Help me! Can't anyone hear me? Just then, Emily, Emily paid attention to the voice coming from the well. Huh? Mother Holly, is that you? What's going on? Emily, oh, you need to come right away. I need your help. Emily left her cross stitch and holding on to the rope, went down the well. Mother Holly was so happy to see her. Oh, this morning, three hunters came and started tearing down my house. They're going to make it a hunting lodge. Oh, but you've been living there for years! They can never do that! Hmm. Oh, I have an idea! Come on, we'll save your house from the hunters! While the hunters were tearing down the inside of the house, a black shadow passed through the window. Hey, did you see this? What was that? Maybe a bear? They panicked a little when the same shadow passed through the window a second time. Huh? It passed again! This must be a bear for sure! The hunters took their arrows and stormed out. But they saw not a bear, but an ugly old witch. Oh, hunters! This house is full of ghosts and fairies! Get out of here now! Now! The hunters didn't realize that the ugly witch was actually Mother Holly. <laughs> There's no such thing as a ghost, old witch. Huh. If you don't believe me, disaster will happen to you. I'm the oldest witch of this forest. Whatever Mother Holly told the hunters, she could not convince them. The hunters continued to break into the house and destroy it. Mother Holly told Emily that she had failed to deceive the hunters. But Emily had another idea. A frightening sound started to reverberate in the house as the three burly hunters were throwing out the items inside the house one by one. house no I will curse you hunters were terrified of the sound while they were looking around in a hurry the vase on the table fell with a bang huh how did that vase fall you dropped it no I didn't he did no you must have hit your foot stop making that creepy noise I'm not making that noise. What are you talking about? It's not us. While the hunters were arguing among themselves, the books started to fall to the ground by themselves. The hunters could not stand the fear and threw themselves out. And Emily stuck her head out from behind the seat she was hiding in and laughed softly. Turns out it was Emily herself who frightened the hunters with her voice and dropped the items with a transparent rope. Gentlemen, that old witch confused us. Let's get on with our work. 
When the hunters entered, they saw a ghost with huge black eyes right in front of them. <laughs> hunters have run away from home, their feet entangled, never to return. Turns out, what they thought was a ghost was Mother Holly herself. The hunters ran so fast that they finally lost their way. Meanwhile, they met a young girl in the forest. Hey, young girl, don't go that way! There's a house full of ghosts there! I think the ghost cursed us! And we lost our way! Oh, no! Oh, that's too bad! Then get this key. A golden gate will appear in front of you. Run away from there! The hunters left with the key they took. But they didn't know that this young girl was Emily, who scared them. A little further on, a golden gate appeared before the hunters. The disguise of each hunter who passed through the gate was changed. Their axes and arrows vanished. I will no longer hunt. All animals will be my friends. I'll always respect nature, protect trees, and all plants. I will never, ever harm anyone's house or property. All three hunters turned into good-hearted gentlemen and left. On the other hand, Emily happily returned to Mother Holly. See, Mother Holly? We knew we'd get your house back! <laughs> yes! The hunters did not hunt us! We hunted them! But Mother Holly's house was in shambles and ruins. Together, they decided to repair and restore the house. However, for this, they had to ask Emma for help. But Emma, she doesn't like to work at all! Emily went to the flower garden and called Emma. When Emma learned that Mother Holly needed help, she happily agreed to come over. They helped each other for days and repaired the house and cleaned everything. In the evening, they sat around a table full of delicious food and talked about the importance of female solidarity. Because when women help each other, it is much easier to solve every problem. Once upon a time, a father and his two young daughters were living together in a land far, far away. One of the girls was very diligent, and the other was very lazy. You barely help at all. And I'm exhausted. Oh, no. You are already doing the cleaning. Why should I get my hands dirty now? Their old father was a hard worker, and he was always tired. The only meal they had was soup and some dry bread in the evenings. One day, the old father made a request of his daughters. My dear daughters, you know, I love you both so very much. I've been thinking. You are both adults now, and it is time for you to take more responsibility. I want both of you to find a job and work. You are right, Daddy. I will find myself a job. And what about you, my daughter? My sister should get a job. Because, you know, that's so her thing. But I think I'd better do the housework, Daddy. The old man was happy to see his daughters so eager. The next day, while the diligent girl left home to find a job, her father came to her. My dear daughter, I have some advice for you. Never refuse someone who asks you for help. Always be diligent. Love your job. Do the job that was given to you to the best of your abilities. Thank you, Daddy. I will never forget your advice. That's my girl. Bye-bye. 
the diligent daughter, set off to find her job, while the lazy daughter, who said that she would do the household chores, did nothing. The house was getting more and more messy and getting dirty every day. Hmm. The diligent girl walked for days, but had not found anyone to work for. After a while, the diligent girl saw a tree with dried branches and roots. Hello, young girl. Can you clean my dry branches and give me some water to my roots? The diligent girl then cleaned all the dry branches of the tree until her palms were bruised and watered the roots with her own drinking water. Ah, thank you, young girl. But now you have no water left. It's okay. You needed help, and I helped you. I can walk a little more and find water for myself. The diligent girl continued on her way. Farther on, she came across a hearth with broken and cracked parts. Hey, young girl. Can you repair me and make me look better? The diligent girl took a handful of mud near her and patched all the cracks on the hearth. Thank you, young girl. But you got so dirty because of me. Oh, it's okay. Clothes don't matter. You needed help, and I helped. The diligent girl left the brand new hearth behind and continued on her way. After a while, a lovely lamb appeared. But the lamb was black, like coal, from head to toe. Hello, young girl. I accidentally got into the coals and got dirty. Would you bathe me in that lake over there? The diligent girl washed the lamb by the lake. The lamb was white and soft as before. Thank you, but you're drenched because of me. You needed help, and I helped. I was already very dirty. Now I'm cleaner. The diligent girl continued on her way. When it got dark, she came across a beautiful house. Where seven fairies lived. The diligent girl entered. Hello. I apologize for coming to your home without permission. I am a young girl looking for a job to work. You can work here if you want, young girl. There are seven rooms in our house. You will only clean six rooms every day. But you must not go into the seventh room. The diligent girl accepted the job. She cleaned six rooms diligently every day, as Fairy said, for a full year. She never entered the seventh room. And when she had enough money, she asked permission from the fairies to return home. Of course, young girl, you can go home. I'm wondering why you never entered the seventh room. My father used to say to do the job right, no matter what. During my time here, my job was to clean only six rooms. And that's what I did. That's what you told me to do. We would like to reward you for your honesty and diligence. Come on, come with us. The fairies asked the young girl to enter the seventh room. When the girl entered, she saw a lot of silver and gold coins. Now... You roll around in these coins, and any that stick to you will be yours. Diligent girl tumbled left and right in coins. She looked almost like a star with the money sticking on her. Then the diligent girl left the fairies to return home. On the way, she came across the lamb she had washed before. The lamb was covered with pearls. I did not forget your help, young girl. Take and get as many pearls as you want. The diligent girl thanked the lamb 
and covered her arms and neck with pearls and continued on her way. This time, she came across the hearth she had previously repaired. I did not forget the help you gave me, young girl. Take it, my warm breads, my lovely cakes are yours. The diligent girl ate some of the bread given by the hearth and took some of it to take home and continued on her way. A little further ahead, she saw the tree. Its branches were covered with fruit. Come, young girl, I did not forget the help you gave me. Take it, all my grape juice is yours. The diligent girl thanked the tree and finally returned home. Her father and lazy sister greeted her at the door. The girl's bundle was full of gold and pearls. The lazy sister was very jealous when she saw that her sister was so rich. Look at all those coins. I must go find a wealthy family to get a job from. If my sister has pearls, I will get emeralds. The lazy girl told her father that she is leaving home to look for a job. Oh, okay, my daughter. But you couldn't even work at home. How will you find a job out there? The lazy girl left before her dad could even finish talking. She walked day and night. A little further down the road, she came across a tree with dry branches. The tree asked the girl for help. Hello, young girl. Would you clean my... Huh? I can't deal with you under the sun. My hair will get messy. Bye! The lazy girl moved on. She saw a cracked and broken hearth a little further. Hearth asked her for help. I can't get my thin and delicate hands dirty for you. My nail polish goes bad. Bye! The lazy girl did not help the hearth either. Then she came across a lamb that was dirty, like black coal. And the lamb asked her to give her a bath. Ew! Disgusting! Get out of my way, you dirty thing! The lazy girl ran away. And came upon a huge house. The lazy girl took advantage of this and asked for work from the seven fairies who were the owners of the house. The head fairy asked her to stay for a year and clean only six rooms. Don't forget, young girl, you will never ever be able to enter the seventh room. The lazy girl reluctantly cleaned all six rooms for months. However, one day she gave in to her curiosity and entered the seventh room. Instead of gold and silver coins, there were bees and bats inside. The bees stung the lazy girl in such a way that she was scarred all over. She was very hurt. The girl immediately left there and started running towards the house. As she ran, she saw the lamb, which she turned down her request for help. The lamb was covered with pearls. The girl wanted to catch the lamb to get some pearls, but the lamb ran away from her. The girl continued walking and was very tired. At that moment, she came across the hearth that she turned down that requested her help. There were loaves of fresh warm bread on the hearth. When the girl wanted to buy a slice of bread, the hearth got hot and lazy girl's hands got burned. Ah! When the lazy girl ran away from there, she came across the tree which she had refused to help. 
there were bunches of fruit on the branches of the tree. When the lazy girl tried to pick some fruit, the tree leaned to the right. The girl ran to the right, but the tree leaned to the left this time. Tired of running around, the lazy girl finally gave up on getting the fruit. She walked non-stop for two full days and finally got home. Her father and sister saw her returning home in dirty clothes and injured, and they were very surprised. The lazy girl told what happened to her with great regret. Oh, and I can't believe it. I hurt so much. Oh. My dear sister, now you understand how important it is to be hardworking. Remember, girl, when you are honest and hardworking in this life, you will be rewarded for sure. After that day, the lazy girl has not been idle and lazy since. The two sisters both worked hard and were rewarded well. And this small family had happy, productive, and peaceful days throughout their lives.